Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Lan at Nostar. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query to find out the first and last day of a week. So if we take a look at the current week, today is 10th of August, which is a Tuesday. So if we want to find out the first day of the week, saying that Monday is the first day of the week and Sunday is the last day of the week, then it should be 9th of August and 15th of August, which is what we have got as a result of this query. So let's write this query and try to understand what it exactly does. So what we're going to do now is use some date functions to get the first day and the last day of the week. So the first date function that we're going to use is a date difference function. So first let's see how the date difference functions actually work. So you have the date diff, and then you have to specify an interval. Interval can be anything in years, months, weeks, or days. So we are going to consider week. So that is, we are going to find out the difference in week. The starting date for us from which we are going to try, uh, find out the difference, um, it could be any date, it could be any base date. So for our understanding, let's take it as any day of the previous week. So let's say 0805, that was in the previous week. And then we are going to find out difference with today's date. So let's just use the get date function to get today's date. And now if we execute this query, we'll get the difference in weeks, which is one week of difference, uh, assuming that our start of the week falls on a Monday. So this is how the day difference function works. Now to find out the first day of the week, and since we do not want to hard code a specific value, we are going to go with a base state. So a base date in this case can be used simply as a very old date. We can take 1900 and 0101, which is 1st of January 1900. So we are going to find out the difference in weeks from this base date, which is going to be some number of weeks, which is actually 6,345 weeks. Now, how are we going to use that result to arrive at the first day of this week? So we have to use another function on top of this date difference function, which is going to be a date add function. Now, date add function works in a similar way to the date difference function. The only difference here is that the date difference gives you or subtracts a specific number of weeks, days, or years from a particular date. And the date add would do the opposite by adding up those many weeks, years, or days to a specific date. So now, since we have found a difference from a base date, which we took as a constant value of 1900101, we want to get the first year of the current week. So we are going to use the date add function. And since the date add function works in a similar way where you have to specify the interval, which is going to be week in our case, then how from or how many days or weeks you want to increment and based on what base date. So first we are going to specify the interval, which is going to be week. Now, the, this is the increment for us, which we had already calculated using the date difference function. So we are going to add these many weeks that we calculated from today's date, uh, assuming a base date. We are going to add that back to that particular date. So again, we are going to add it to the same base date. So here I am going to add it again to the same base date. So it would, it's not going to give me the or the current date or the get date as in if the today's date is 10th of August and it's not going to return 10th of August because we are adding in terms of weeks. So we are adding these many weeks to this particular date. Okay, so let's look, take a look at the result and see what is our output. So our output is 9th of August 2021, which is our Monday. Now, why have we got Monday? Um, let's say we wanted it to be a Sunday. So we have got a Monday because if you take a look at the day that uh, on which this particular date fell, it was a Monday. If you want it to be, or if you want your start of week to start from Sunday, you have to take a base date that falls on a 
on a Sunday. So for the purpose of understanding, let's take a simple day. So if we go back to the calendar, we know that, okay, the 1st of August fell on a Sunday. So let's give this date. And add it over here. And now run this query. So what we have got in the output is 8th of August, which is a Sunday. So whatever date you are going to give over here, the day on which that date falls, that is the day you are going to get as the first day of your week. Okay, so now that we know how to get the first day of the week, let's find out how we can get the end date or the end day of that particular week. Okay, so now we have got this. Let's bring another query. So again, we are going to use the same interval. So let's just copy this formula as it is. Be here. Okay. Okay. So we are going to use the same interval. So now we have calculated the number of weeks that we want. That uh, is the difference from the current day. And now we want to arrive at the last day of the week. So to arrive at the last day of the week, what we need to do is we need to add one day more to this interval, right? So we are going to add one more week so that it goes actually to the next week, okay? So if I, let's say I simply uh, run this down and run this. Okay. And I'm going to get to. But if you actually look at the number of uh, weeks that have been passed since the 1st of August, it's going to be one week. So if I just run it till here, it's the difference in week is one week since 1st of August. But now I'm going to add one to it to arrive at the last year of the week, which means I'm going to add two weeks. And once I add two weeks, I'm going to add it not to the 1st of August that I have Because if I do that, then what will happen? Let's just execute this query. Then what I'm going to get is 8th of August and 15th of August. Okay, so let's go back to the calendar and see what I have. So I've got 8th of August and 15th of August. Okay, so if my week starts at um, on 8th of August, ideally the end date has to be 14th. 15th is the start of the next day. So I need to go back by one date over here. So to go back to one date, what I can do is I can go back on my base date by one date. So instead of giving 1st of August, what now I'm going to give over here is one day previous to the 1st of August, which is 31st of July. And now if I execute this, I'll get the current, I'll, I'll get the correct date. Uh, I'll get 8 and 14. All right. So this is how you can find out the first day and the last day of the week. Now this is very specific. And we, if we do not want to put a particular date, there's an easier way to do that. Okay. So as we said earlier, that instead of giving a more current date, we can give it a date of 19001. Uh, 1900-0101, which is 1st of January 1900. An easier way to do that instead of writing the date is simply to reference it by zero. So if you reference, if you just put zero, it denotes in uh, relation to a date. It means it's 1st of January 1900. So I can just remove all this, make it more simple and more generic, and I can just put zero over here. Now in this case, again, I need to replace it this with zero. This is going to be my 1st of January 1900. And here, because I now want to go back by one day, because I'm adding one more week, but I want to remain in the same week. I just want the last day of that week. I'm going to go back to that base day of minus one. All right. Minus one in this case means 1899, 12th, 31st. Just 31st of December, uh, 1899. All right. 
now if I execute this query, I'll again uh, get the same result. Now in this case, again, the start of the week falls on a Monday, the end date of the week falls on a Sunday, it's because by default, 1st January 1900 falls on a Monday, and uh, 31st December 1899 falls on a Sunday. But this is more generic. This can be used for any year, any date, and you can replace your get date if you want any particular date, uh, difference with respect to any particular date. But this is how you can use this formula. You can also expand this to find out the difference of the first day and last day of a month. You can just replace the week by a month. And if you want to find out the first and last day of a year in a generic way, you can replace it by year and you can find that out. So this is how you can find out the first and last day of the week. Also, if you want to find out what day it fell on, uh, especially if you're working with the first and last day of the year, you can use other functions like the date part name functions, which will give you the name of the day on which the first of the year fell and the last day of the year fell if that is your requirement. So this is how we can use all these date functions. These date functions are extremely useful and they can be used in a various ways and most of the aggregations and computations are based on dates. So these are very important. I hope that you like this video. If you found it useful, then please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Keep watching.